Hi, welcome everyone. This is Tracy Lewis, and we are here with Pastor Scott and Shelly Bradford with Matthew's Hope. We are in episode five with Straight Talk, No BS with Matthew's Hope. So today we're going to be talking about dying with dignity. Um, but first, Shelly, tell us what Matthew's, Matthew's Hope is and what do you guys do? So Matthew's Hope is a homeless ministry and we are in Central Florida. We have a location in Winter Garden as well as in Brevard. And um, we do wraparound services anywhere from helping our friends on the street as well as we have transitional housing. Okay, nice. Pastor Scott, you want to add anything to that? You know, the only thing, you know, before anybody writes us or sends me a nasty gram, because you know, a lot of people are very, they get uptight about using the word homeless. Sure. And though we don't like to use it, we understand people know. We actually say structurally challenged. Uh, the latest thing now is is uh, the unhoused. Okay. Um, you know, the, the reality of it is, is they're homeless. They, they, they don't have a home. And when I use that terminology, people know what I'm talking about. But I always make sure that our guests, as we always refer to our folks, um, it's not about being homeless. It's, it's really about where are we going to go from here. Okay. Right. So speaking of not having a home, let's talk about you guys. You guys do many, many services. Um, transitional housing is one of them. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? What is transitional housing? Well, I want to make sure people understand also that, that, that our transitional, some people confuse transitional housing with, with, um, with halfway housing. Okay. A halfway house is someone who's typically moving from prison into the real world once again, or maybe they're going through addiction and moving through the real world that, that way. And, and that's not what our transitional housing is. It's, it's designed for, to help people get on their feet. There's a lot of responsibility involved with it, but to prepare them for what's next. You know, too often I've, I've seen organizations, they give a, literally give a certificate for graduating the program <clears throat> but you're sending people right back on the street. Mm. With us, I've never given a certificate that I know of. Mm -hmm. And um, but what I do tell people is that when you get a chance to invite us to your home that you're now paying for and you're preparing the meal, we're there. Uh, we want to make sure that you're prepared to be fully uh, self-sufficient and independent when you leave us and we make sure we put enough tools in your toolbox mm, to be able to do that. To have those tools. Yeah. How many houses do you guys have now? We've got, uh, we've got 14, okay. uh, uh, half of those are duplexes, and then uh, the others are single family homes. So we got some three bedrooms, so two bedrooms, and some one bedrooms. And uh, we own half of those that we actually purchased about eight years ago. Okay. Um, it was one of these things where, where uh, I felt like we needed to have some type of housing. And, and the funny part is I was telling people that, that what we needed is a group of homes. Yeah houses side by side that we could make this work. And people thought I was nuts. And so this is right before Christmas, about eight years ago. And I went driving through a Coe in Winter Garden and I literally came across a group of houses that were for sale. Mm. And the funny part about it, a friend of mine came across those houses the same day. And so um, uh, his name was Selby Weeks. And, and I reached out to Selby and I said, hey, and he goes, look at these. We're talking about the same place. Wow, oh, wow. And, and so the funny part about it was that uh, there was no, we didn't have any money, uh, but these places say, how do you were get these places? Yeah, and right. so it's kind of like, okay, now what do we do right. that uh, we found what we mm -hmm. want? And so we approached the owner and they were asking for quite a bit of more money, but we made an offer. Uh, they accepted it, uh, which another was a startling revelation because again, now that you've accepted the offer, we have to figure out how to come up with the money. Right. right. And so I was bold, a little more brazen at the time, and uh, had a little money in the bank at the time. And so I wrote this, this landlord, this, this homeowner, uh, a check for $5,000 and said, if you'll give us 30 days to do our due diligence mm -hmm. on these houses, and if we miss it, you keep my $5,000. And that was my personal money, so I was pretty motivated. Right. Um, and then what ended up happening is we, uh, and it wasn't that we wanted so much due diligence. I, the houses were in terrible shape. Mm. I figured 30 days to try so to figure out how to So you need money to fix them up too. Right. right. So right. all these things are happening because, you know, we know how big this is going to be. And so with, with Selby and some other folks, where there was a LLC designed called Matthew's Hope Helpers. And we allowed people to literally invest, I think it was a minimum of $10,000 with a 4% return on a 30 year amortization with a five year balloon. Mm. Because we knew after five years, we should be able to have some credit. Sure. And, and literally the community out here in West Orange County invested in it. 
We got Lowe's involved. We it's put phenomenal. a lot, the houses are absolutely beautiful. And to this day, they look like the day that we finished them. That's great. So it's pretty cool. So Shelly, what makes a good candidate for these trans transitional houses? They can't just come to you guys and be like, we need somewhere to stay. What so we look process. for somebody that actually is willing to move forward. We look for somebody who doesn't want to stay in the situation they're in. Um, and put in the work. Put in the work. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we look for somebody either, do you have a job? Do you have a skill? Um, what can we do to get you to move forward? And okay. so our, our goal is to get somebody to move forward. Um, and I realize as I'm saying it, not everybody understands our terms, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that once you leave, you can stand on your own two feet. You can have a life of independence and self-sustainability and move forward without Matthew's Hope. Mm, gotcha. And how long do they typically stay in these houses? The longest for the state of Florida somebody can stay is two years. Okay. So, um, so that's the longest. And, you know, some people stay three months and some people stay up to the two-year mark. It really just kind of depends. It's very individualized. Gotcha. A lot depends on any kind of baggage they have to work with. Okay. If they have some legal issues, health issues, mm. financial issues, we need to work through those things with them. Sure uh, sometimes it's cleaning up their credit, and that can take some time. Yeah. Um, but as we always say, help us help them help themselves. Mm we invest in them as long as they continue to invest in themselves. Right, that's awesome. Let's move on to um, curious, what does dying with dignity mean to you guys? That's the topic of our episode today, so yeah. let's dive in into this that. This is something that we've talked about a lot and, mm -hmm. and have tried to figure out how do you make that possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we realized, we came to the realization pretty early in the game that the bulk of the people that we serve uh, were going to literally die on the streets. Oh. Uh, we're seeing people die from sometimes just old age. Mm -hmm. We're seeing people die from cancer mm -hmm. you know, or other uh, diseases mm -hmm. and that that they could possibly have, if they had the proper care, maybe wow. wouldn't have died. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's pretty horrible to think that people are just found one day and they're dead in a bus stop wow. on a bench in the woods, behind a dumpster, what have you. Mm -hmm. And um, so we started looking at this thing and as, as our organization is set up, it's not that we can't do certain things, but it takes a long time sometimes to, to take somebody and get them to say into hospice. Mm -hmm. We've been successful doing that, but to get them there takes a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, or get someone to get surgeries and cancer surgery, mm -hmm. which we've had done, Advent Health, has has been wonderful with us over the years in, yeah, you guys in caring for ourselves. Good success yeah. stories with mm -hmm. it's crazy, and we've seen that. But then we were approached by Orange County, and this is something that's going to surprise a lot of people because in our nearly 14-year history, we've never taken any type of government funding. And so, to make it clear why I entertain this idea, it was not so much about the government funding. It was you're going to tie an arm around my back, mm -hmm. and what makes us successful. A lot of that does not fit under HUD requirements and what have you. Okay. So over the last eight months or so, we were able to negotiate an agreement with them that we have both signed and we're waiting to finally be finalized uh, coming up here in the next couple weeks. And what it's gonna allow us to do is continue to identify the folks that we realize will never, they, there's not an end game for them through Matthew's Hope. Mm -hmm. We call it till death do us part. We care for them until we either get acknowledged that they you know, that they passed away or what have you. Yeah. Whereas what will happen with this is we will evaluate people like we do, but we'll decide what path they're gonna go. And, if, and, and this is great for like seniors, mm -hmm. uh, people with physical or mental disabilities, uh, some of our veterans we serve, um, uh, you know, people like this that, that uh, just their, their options for recapturing life are, mm -hmm. are damn near impossible. Mm -hmm. And so what will happen is we will feed this into the system and it takes about a year from what we've been told. And if Orange County can keep their end of the bargain up, we will help move these people through the system and they will help us house them in, in something that is going to be suited most for them. Okay. So again, if they're seniors, they're veterans, you know, there's things they're gonna need 
that typical everyday housing may not offer. Mm -hmm. And so we have, uh, we're gonna see what we can do. We're yeah. establishing our teams to do that. But a lot of the stuff was things we were doing before. Okay. Again, this is gonna allow us to help a lot more. Right. Which will allow us to use a lot of our resources for what our main mission is, which is to move people towards that independence and, and self-sustainability. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you have an estimate or a guess of how many people are dying on the streets? Oh, that's hard. You know, I, you I, I will like tell you, give an example. Gauge I tell that? You. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's again, is it reported? Is, yeah. is did anybody find out? Mm -hmm. um, you know, because a lot of times these folks are, you know, nobody knows where they're at. They're not sure if they're alive or dead anyhow. Yeah. Uh, but I will tell you that last year we were at, uh, in Brevard County, we were asked to do the, um, the memorial service they do for the homeless yearly to host it. And I can tell you that we did, I believe it was 141 names mm -hmm. wow. of people just in Brevard County that had passed that, that they year, know of that the coroner right. was able right. to provide wow. to us. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So That's there's, crazy. there's probably more. That's right. I guess. Yeah. Wow. So you have transitional housing that you guys are helping. Um, what other things are helping anything outside of the transitional housing, I guess? We have our medical can, home. Okay, I, I, let's I talk about a that a little deal. bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The medical because home. Because that's helping, because you talked about there's so many getting cancer, they have these element, mm -hmm. the elements out there, and it's affecting their health. Right. So with our medical home, we can do anything from just comprehensive wound care okay. to um, we actually just um, signed on to make sure that we were covered for sovereign immunity. So then that way, Linda can actually get them with doctors that can help them, mm. um, which is which is major. So it's a right. lot of, um, what's the word? A lot of scheduling and, yeah. and searching for doctors that can actually work with that specific individual and are, is willing to work with that specific individual. Oh, wow. And, and part of the grant that we're talking <clears throat> about, we built in a component to it to expand mental health uh, mm -hmm. our ability to to identify and to care for mental health issues and and more medical issues in fact we we just broke ground to add additional exam rooms uh, to our current location okay. here in Orange County nice and with that specific thing because we felt you know where a lot of this money could be used just to house people mm -hmm. but if you house them then you can't do and, and people are gonna argue with me on this but <laughs> and I, I expect I expect the the nasty grams but, but what happens, the idea of putting someone in a house doesn't make them any less homeless than putting me in the mm -hmm. garage makes me a car. Sure. Right. If we don't identify what's going on, you know, I always talk about the, the cause and effect of things. You know, often what happens is most programs are structured to address the symptoms. Mm -hmm. We're addressing the cause. Sure. And then how do we take care of this? What can we do to either move this people off the street, move this person off the street, or to improve their quality of life in some way, have, yeah. knowing we'll never get them off the street, but can we connect them with services that might allow them to have a better quality of life mm -hmm. until that time that they they pass? Yeah. And getting them into that type of housing because it's it's a uh, you know it doesn't sound probably ter I mean I know it sounds bad, but until you actually see it mm -hmm. and and you watch people literally watch their life expire, and there could have been more done to help it. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. That's tough to sleep at at night when you know those things are happening wow. and, and it's happening right here in our backyard every yeah. day. Yeah. So I don't mean to be stereotypical, but you talked a little bit about there's veterans on, on the street. Who else is on the street? Because I want people to relate to this and to know that there's they're humans. They're like you, Shelley. Right. They're like right. us. They are us. Right. Yeah. I mean, one so, one so thing who that else you, is like on the street? Yeah, one thing that Scott talks about a lot that really kind of like got my heart mm -hmm. is where people think that their family members have moved down south for a better life and they don't even know they're homeless. Mm. And so when when we find out somebody has passed away and Scott calls them and yeah. says, hey, I want you to know and your father or your mother yeah. has passed away. And they're like, well, why do you know that? Oh um, they had no idea that their family member was homeless. And that really, you know, tugs at my heart a lot right. because that just, I can't imagine. And, and, it, it's, and it's unfortunately more common than people think. You know, I'm 61 years old. When we were younger, we always traveled to the grandparents' house. Mm -hmm. Now the grandparents do most of the traveling. Mm -hmm. right? And so they assume, you know, one of the things we've seen many times is where 
an older gentleman, his wife got terminally ill. He threw everything he had at it to save her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she finally passes. His resources are depleted. Uh, he's given up. He goes, I'll just die too. Well, then they realize after a while that, you know, they don't get to pick and choose how that's going to happen. And, uh, and so what happens, they'll, they'll take a bus ride home or sometimes fly, usually a bus ride because okay. it's cheaper. And they'll bus ride home and go up north and they see their family and stuff. And, and uh, everybody thinks, hey, dad is down south and living in Florida. You know, living, everybody living wants the to dream. Florida. Right, living right, the dream. Right, right. And, and uh, they're shocked and they, they sometimes don't want to believe it. But I, a lot of it has to do with pride. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of these men especially will sit there and say, mm -hmm. uh, Scott, my, my son or my daughter, they have enough issues of their own. They don't need to worry about me. And they tell me that if I say, if I break that confidence, that they'll not come back. And, mm -hmm. and I've had it happen. So I so have to swallow that, anything, yeah. pray right, through it, right. and then know that I'm going to have to possibly make that phone call. Right. Well, I appreciate everything that you guys are doing. There's so many services that you guys are offering to help people die with dignity, help the, the transitional housing that we talked about, the other episodes we we're talking about, all these other things in medical and whatnot. How can we as a community help fund these, these services and the employees that you guys have that are going out and the food and the nurses and like all of this stuff? Donations. How can we help? Donations okay. are big for us. Um, really, until COVID, we really never had to buy any products. Okay. But since the pandemic, we've really had to buy a lot of products that, that went towards other things and other services. So we've really had to be careful with our yeah. money and figure out how we were going to, yeah. um, you know, provide for our, our guests otherwise, you okay. know, but, you know, we are, Scott is really good about putting on um, social media um, what our donations are and what we need, what our donations are needed and what okay. we need financially is also a, a big way. Okay, that's great. So yeah, we well, can just I, go I, to your I, social you media. Know, I, I want to let people know too that, you know, the we're still, from our standpoint, we're still reeling from the pandemic. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. You know, during the pandemic, a few things happened. Number one, many, uh, if not most, nonprofits that serve in this sector either shuttered or closed down. Okay. Mm -hmm. And part of it was because of the way they were funded. Uh, I always use the example like they had funding for black shirts. Mm -hmm. I have 100,000, but to live, you have to wear a, mm -hmm. a purple We Are Winter Garden shirt now. Right. Wow. We don't have money for that, mm -hmm. and they can't move it. And so we spun, in a 72 hour, we spun our entire program to go mobile, made the investment into it, not having any idea that it'd be going on and affecting us three years later. Mm -hmm. right. And so, as Shelly was saying, we weren't buying clothing, we weren't buying hygiene, we weren't buying uh, food, which we buy a large portion of it now. And part of it was, it's not that our donations slowed down, it's we went from serving 100 people a week up to 500 people a week oh, yeah. at one point. Yeah. And it was like overnight, I compare it to leaving your house one morning and you come back, you got the same budget, the same job, the same house, but you walk right. in, there's five times as many people mm -hmm. and you're supposed to feed them all. How are you supposed to keep and, up? And so right. it's really important that if people are moved and care about what we're doing, that they do follow us on social media, social media because we do share specific needs. And, and the one thing nobody ever likes to talk about is money, but the reality of it is, is, is we literally blew through any reserves we had over the last couple yeah, of years. For we sure. are month to month, and by the grace of God, we've never missed a payment on anything. We have roughly 45 employees now. Mm -hmm. um, there, it takes a lot, and, and a lot of these grants that are available, they will pay for building a building and things like mm -hmm. that what they won't pay for is overhead. Wow. Right. right. And people forget that, okay, you got a building, we got to have it insured, electricity, right. you got a van, right. okay, but we have to insure <laughs> right. it, right. gas it, take care of it. Yes. And, and so it's a lot of money to be able to do what we do. Um, it takes more than a good heart. You've got to be a good steward of what you have. And I think we always have been, yes. but, but I think the, the tough part for me lately has been having to cut back some services mm. that we feel are necessary to be able to prolong, yeah. you know, our li lifespan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a fun event coming up, Shelly. We do. You want to tell us about it? Because so this will help provide services and help oh, for Matthew's sure. hope with all of the, these things that we're talking about. So in previous years, we've had the garden party, and that's been in November. But we decided to move it up this year to um, September. Okay. And we've changed the whole theme, which right. I think is going to be exciting. Um, it's called the Wild Wild West steampunk event am i saying it right 
It's close. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not we're it. We're gonna go with <laughs> no, it. it, is, it <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're steampunk meets the wild, wild west. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Silly me. I thought it was. <laughs> Mine sounded good too. It yeah. did. <laughs> and we That's get, exciting. Okay. And, yeah, and we get we are um, you know all the staff is preparing to dress up as um, you know different you know some are kind of coming in western okay. and they're just gonna you know be boring people in boots <laughs> <laughs> and then some of us are really going to go out all out and like i think it's going to be fun yeah. yes i think it's, it's going to be a lot of fun the thing that yeah. I'm thinking, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I tell, in, in, in a lot of the folks that come out to our events are old enough to remember james west and the wild wild west television show mm -hmm. and it's funny because charlene and i were starting to watch it the other day and the first episodes were in black and white, and I'd forgotten that. Yeah. Okay, the wow. first year was all black and white, so here we're watching this black and white TV, but what was really cool about it was that's kind of where steampunk started to show up. Mm. It was a Western, but these gadgets and stuff would show up. Yeah. And wow. so when we got talking about doing this, we go, now that would be fun. Yeah. Because again, it's as easy as somebody uh, just putting on a pair of blue jeans and, a, and mm -hmm. cowboy boots or something and a hat mm -hmm. to, to going all out, and, and we're gonna have okay. fun with it. We're, we're really excited about it. And yeah. how do you, they get tickets? So they go to the Matthews Hope website, okay. MatthewsHopeMinistries.org, okay. and you go to the events tab, and then you go to um, the Wild Wild West party, and you can get your tickets there. Perfect. Do you well, get tickets, the sponsorship opportunities, it's all. Yes, there's, so, all, there's an option. They can do it right online there, or they can call us, and, mm -hmm. and one way or another, we will walk them through it okay. and For make sure. sure. And the nice thing is, it starts out at $150 a person. Okay. So, you know, it's going to be a fun night of hors d'oeuvres. We got dancing, music, uh, silent auction, um, a lot of fun stuff. Love your grace of silent auctions. Yeah, yeah, it mm -hmm. should be really, really cool. We got a lot of cool stuff coming in for the auction also. So nice. I'm I excited about it. Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for talking about dying with dignity. I know sometimes it's a little rough for people to hear, but we need to talk about it because it's no BS, right? Right. Yes. So this... Um, ends our episode and we will see you next time because we have a special someone coming in to talk about her story how she went through the program where she is now so i'm super excited to meet her and introduce you or her to you guys she's a rock star i yep. can't wait yep